Welcome to the Gospel with the Church Fathers. Today is the Wednesday of the sixth week in Ordinary Time. Thank you for watching, and please share this episode with your family, friends, and on social media. Thank you. Today's Gospel is from St. Mark, chapter 8, verses 22 through 26, and the commentaries are from St. Theophylactus, St. Bede, Pseudo-Jerome, and Pseudo-Chrysostom. The Gospel when Jesus and his disciples arrived at Bethsaida, people brought to him a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Putting spittle on his eyes, he laid his hands on the man and asked, Do you see anything? Looking up, the man replied, I see people looking like trees and walking. Then he laid hands on the man's eyes a second time, and he saw clearly. His sight was restored, and he could see everything distinctly. Then he sent him home and said, Do not even go into the village. The Commentaries St. Theophylactus For Bethsaida appears to have been infected with much infidelity, wherefore the Lord reproaches it. Matthew 11.21, Woe to thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. He then takes out of the town the blind man, who had been brought to him, for the faith of those who brought him was not true faith. It goes on, And when he had spit in his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. Pseudo Chrysostom he spat indeed, and put his hand upon the blind man, because he wished to show that wonderful are the effects of the divine word added to action. For the hand is the symbol of working, but the spittle of the word proceeding out of the mouth. Again he asked him whether he could see anything, which he had not done in the case of any whom he had healed, thus showing that by the weak faith of those who brought him, and of the blind man himself, his eyes could not altogether be opened. Wherefore there follows, And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Because he was still under the influence of unfaithfulness, he said that he saw men obscurely. From the commencement, however, of the return of his senses, he leads him to apprehend things by faith, and thus makes him see perfectly. Wherefore it goes on, After that he put his hands again upon his eyes, and he began to see. And afterwards he adds, And he was restored, and saw all things clearly. That is, being perfectly healed in his senses and his intellect. It goes on, And he sent him away to his house, saying, Go into thy home, and if thou enter into the town, tell it not to any one. St. Theophylactus these precepts he gave him because they were unfaithful, as has been said, lest perchance he should receive hurt in his soul from them, and they, by their unbelief, should ran into a more grievous crime. St. Bede Or else, putting spittle into the eyes of the blind man, he lays his hands upon him that he may see, because he has wiped away the blindness of the human race both by invisible gifts and by the sacrament of his assumed humanity. For the spittle, proceeding from the head, points out the grace of the Holy Ghost. But though by one word he could cure the man wholly and at once, still he cures him by degrees, that he may show the greatness of the blind man, which can hardly, and only as it were, step by step, be restored to light. And he exhibits to us his grace by which he furthers each step towards perfection. Again, whoever is weighed down by a blindness of such long continuance that he is unable to distinguish between good and evil, sees, as it were, men like trees walking, because he sees the deeds of the multitude without the light of discretion. Pseudo-Jerome He put his hands again upon his eyes, that he might see all things clearly, that is, understand invisible things by visible, and with the eye of a pure mind contemplate what the eye hath not seen, 
the glorious state of his own soul after the rust of sin. He sent him to his home, that is, to his heart, that he might see in himself things which he had not seen before. For a man despairing of salvation does not think that he can do at all what, when enlightened, he can easily accomplish.